when I was like a very little girl what I wanted to be when I grew up. Um, I definitely would have said I wanted to be a singer. And then I think that was like my very little girl dream. And then the sort of more mature little girl maybe thought that that would never happen and sort of let it go. Um, I didn't study music in school. I, um, I just sort of stumbled into it after school. School just kind of cemented it for me. I, I knew this is what I was going to do, more or less, but that just kind of was the nail in the coffin. We are really excited to be at Mowdown over the 4th of July weekend. Um, we are going to be at the Peach Festival in Pennsylvania in July, and we're going to be at Levitate in August, also in Mass, and more recently, yeah, uh, or more soon. June 27th, uh, we get to open in for Joey Dosick, which is something that we're really looking forward to. If I were to give one one piece of advice to another female artist who wanted to do this, um, I would say try to always be yourself. It's a really male-dominated industry, and even probably most of the musicians that you're going to be working with are going to be male, and not that um, not that people always do it on purpose, but there's just like a lot of pressure to be this way or that way or to be wild or to be fun or to be serious or to be sexy or to be um, so many different things and it's hard to remember to just be yourself and if you're however you are that's you and you can just be that and you don't have to be like try to be like other people that you see or other yeah anyone else but Whatever your vibe is, like, try to stick to that. Joni Mitchell has been a really important musician and songwriter to me in my life. Bonnie Raitt, Susan Tedeschi, Fiona Apple. I'm super obsessed with Brandi Carlisle the last couple of years. I love Emily King. Um, I love... Um, fellow artist from Rochester, New York, named Michaela Davis, who's up and coming and just so inspiring and incredible. Um, if, I mean, I love Lake Street Dive. Rachel Price is such an incredible person and performer and personality. And Cal from Rebel Bucket, who also has her own project called Cal Bells. I listened to a lot of her music over the last couple years and love her tremendously and look up to her. I don't know what it's like at your house, but do you, do you leave like for a third of the year? You know, no, th there's yeah. all, that's that's like for any musician that's like a serious up and down thing that everybody has to learn how to like navigate, you know, at home, like if you have a partner and just like with whatever your living situation is, you know, coming and going all the time. And it's, you know, there's times where it's easier than others. Yeah, it's generally like a roller coaster though. Yeah. But everybody like in our group, like, you know, all of their of our partners like understand that this is like our life and our lifestyle and that that's what comes with the territory and like you know everybody is down for the the ups and downs yeah working in the arts is just crazy too yeah. you know in an industry that's um i don't know like it's just it's crazy the arts i mean i don't even know where to start with talking about how to work in something that's like inherently anti-capitalism but so much Capitalism is involved in like doing it as a career and it's just such a weird, it's just a, yeah. So let's call it nine years ago. Um, I had just moved to Burlington, Vermont, and I um, wanted to do some singing. Um, I was new to the area and there is this beautiful place called Radio Bean that has held many a uh, wonderful musical residencies over the years and um, the conversation started happening where we would put together something for Thursday nights there and just do like a recurring um, a recurring residency weekly and we got the idea to do like a soul night um, and I had never sung anything like that before really I mostly my performance background is really just folk music okay. um, and 
Shane Hardiman, who plays keys with us, who wasn't here today, um, was a friend of mine from my folk music um, time in Burlington, and he helped to sort of field the first iteration of this residency band, which included Bob um, and a bunch of people who are no longer in the band. Um, and originally, the very first, you know, coming together of everyone was just to play covers. So it was soul night. So we were just doing like classic soul um, and or other things that fell under the, you know, sort of American soul music umbrella. Um, people came and went. The residency <laughs> became really popular in Burlington and we got along really well and started writing music together. Just, I guess this was in the sort of, when you, after you left, Bob I, left had, and, I left and came back. Bob had a very brief stint in the first iteration of the band, and then he was like, I don't have time for this shit. Yeah, I was there for like the first three shows, like for the first three weeks or something like that, and then I had to bounce, and then I made my way back in like two plus years later. So yeah. sort of over that time and <laughs> over, because of this residency, we, I guess just played together every week, rehearsed every week on Thursdays during the day at Shane's house, and we just got along really well and liked working together and liked playing music together and then so we started writing music um, and then sort of very unintentionally and naturally we started playing um, all over Vermont and then all over New England and it's just kind of grown from there and we obviously stopped doing the residency but we did it for the better part of five years every week um, until we started touring so much and doing sort of different types of venues in Burlington. But the whole this whole thing was born out of a weekly residency that was based around like American soul music. And we started writing and somehow we like all didn't hate each other. And we had a lot of chemistry and a lot of friendship and it just made it snowball into like us being like, I guess we do music more like yeah, full time. Let's try to and <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I've kind of had like, you know, a toe or two in like the video world for, I don't know, like five plus years or so. So I'm kind of relatively new to it, but I just very quickly thought it was kind of just the way you put it. It's just uh, it's just like getting to play in a, in a different playground, you know? And I've gotten to do like commercial work on the side, you know, to like pay bills, but I've gotten to do some like really fun, weird stuff. I've gotten to like, I've actually gotten to do stuff like this where I interview musicians that like I love, you know, like it's an interview like Warnings and Derek Trucks and talk to people like Carlos Santana and stuff like that, where it's just like, cool, this is a, I, I get to have this conversation with you because of this other world, you know, like hopefully, hopefully I get to play music with you one day, but for now I get to just have a conversation with you, you know, and then um, beyond that, like I'm just getting, you know, into like uh, my first, making my first documentary and that's, that's its own weird, crazy world to try to get into. Persevering till this point and being in a band with lots of people and just still having fun. Yeah. Still doing it. And it's still working. Surviving. Survival. Survi yeah, survival. Survival has been the greatest milestone. <laughs> That's one of them anyway. It's one. I think um, making a full-length album was a big milestone for us. Uh, and our first experience working with a producer on that album was really cool to have our music um, entrusted into the hands of someone else and have a result that we loved and that was greater than what we, you know, could have done on our own. Yeah, that's true. <laughs>